On this episode of Travelogue, we're going to visit the ancient city of Guangzhou, brave enough to taste the local delicacy of chicken feet to see the largest Gothic cathedral in all of East Asia, marvel at the mythical statue of the five goats, and skip to the fabulous natural parks in the south of China. All this and more on today's episode of Travelogue. city of Guangdong province, Guangzhou, has a couple of nicknames. Most of the world already knows it as Canton, and the Chinese know it as Yangcheng, the goat city. I've heard plenty about its exotic foods, interesting buildings, and hot, hot weather. Welcome to Travelogue, I'm Chelsea, and now it's time to explore Guangzhou. Why is Guangzhou named the goat city? Legend has it that a long time ago, five saints riding five headly goats with wheat in their mouths came to Guangzhou. The saints rewarded the local people with the wheat, blessing them with eternal prosperity and abundance. And so Guangzhou became known as the Goat City. Yueshou Park is the largest park in downtown Guangzhou. Sprawling across 860,000 square meters, the park is made up of three artificial lakes and seven hills of Yueshou Mountain. I had a great teacher here today. She knows all the moves. The newest hot moves here in Canton. This is where it's at. Check out the feet. At the crack of dawn, people flock to Yesho Park to start the day off right with their daily morning exercise. Everything from badminton, group aerobics, martial arts, and even the Chinese version of hacky sack. Although their interpretation is a little bit different, the basic principle is the same. Keep it in the air. Guangzhou is one of the five national central cities, located in southern China on the Pearl River. About 120 kilometers northwest of Hong Kong, Guangzhou is a key transportation hub and trading port. A whopping 14 million people live in this huge city divided up into 12 suburbs. Western visitors to China sometimes ask, where is Canton? For many foreigners, Canton is Guangzhou city. But Canton has also been confused with the province of Guangdong, a blunder among English speakers inherited from the old times. It's believed that when the first European settlers, the Portuguese, arrived, they named the city as Canton, derived from Guangdong province. To make things simple, Canton is Guangzhou city, and Guangzhou city is in Guangdong. Hidden in the downtown of Guangzhou holds the hugest cathedral in all of Asia, the Sacred Heart Cathedral. This massive structure was built in 1863 all by hand. China accommodates for all types of religions and languages, but for the Catholic religion, this was the birthplace in China. Because in the earliest history, the only place foreigners could enter the mainland was through Guangzhou. Facade, it's hard to imagine this all granite structure was constructed entirely by hand. Venturing into this Roman Catholic cathedral, into its majestic arches and vaults, lit through the stained glass windows, is a journey into history. Another great thing about the Sacred Heart Cathedral is that it's like most churches around the world, it's free. 
One thing to remember, that if you want to see the inside of the cathedral, it's closed from 11.30 to 2.30. But not to worry, outside is plenty to see, for example, the special touch of the Chinese stone lions. Travelog. We're going to visit the ancient city of Guangzhou, brave enough to taste the local delicacy of chicken feet to see the largest Gothic cathedral in all of East Asia, marvel at the mythical statue of the five goats, and skip to the fabulous natural parks in the south of China. All this and more on today's episode of Travelog. temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. The rainy season falls between April and August. This also, by the way, is typhoon season. The best time to visit Guangzhou is between October and December. My personal tip is to bring an umbrella on your visit because the rain here goes and comes in spurts and you just never know when it's going to come down. We now venture into Old Guangzhou, also known as Liwan District, to the Xiamen Island. It's filled not with Chinese buildings, but with Western architecture. During the Qing Dynasty, Xiamen Island was divided into the British and French concessions and was a small European enclave. Today, many Victorian-style villas and other Western-style buildings survive here. Located right beside the Pearl River is the Xiamen Island. It's not actually an island, but in Chinese it means sandbank. And right now it's already connected to the rest of the city by several bridges. And from the mid-18th century to the mid-19th century, this is the only place where foreign merchants were allowed to live. Of course, these days, you can roam around freely in Guangzhou. If you have trouble finding it, don't worry, because it's located conveniently beside the White Swan Hotel. Xiamen Island has become a popular backdrop for photos, particularly wedding photos. But the island has even more to offer in the way of new families. Since the turn of the millennium, Xiamen Island has become well known for the many Western couples seeking to adopt Chinese babies and children. Xiamen Island covers an area of only 0.3 square kilometers and is separated from the mainland by a small canal. Even though it's located inside the city, it's a perfect place to get some peace and rest. Enjoy the sound of silence and leave the city without really leaving the city. <laughs> <laughs> Living in a hot and damp climate, 365 days a year, the people of Guangzhou have well-adapted lifestyles. In Guangzhou, there's a specific type of architecture called Xilo, which are more or less arcades. The shape of these arcades mimic the front legs of a horse, forming an inverted U-shape. The arcade covers the sidewalk so people are always protected from the rain and sun. Shilo arcades can be found in the Liwan district of Guangzhou and many of the other old districts. What? Oh, this is uh, tea is called <laughs> I don't know how to say English. Let's check it out. Oh. Ah. How cool! Ah. 
三颗下去了一点土，等一下十分钟，你就是干甜干甜的喉咙。Oh, after ten minutes, I'll be cured. When traveling around China, one important thing to note is, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, especially when it comes to eating and drinking. For example, this tea will help replenish your body as you slowly adapt to Guangzhou's weather. Always be open to try new things. The primary language in Guangzhou is Cantonese. It's considered a prestigious dialect. So if you want to learn it in its purest form, Guangzhou is the place to be. However, standard Mandarin or Putonghua is also widely spoken here due to the influx of migrants. As with elsewhere in China, standard Mandarin is the only language used in schools, so it's fluently spoken by today's generation in Guangzhou. Even within the fast economically growing city of Guangzhou. There's still a lot of history buried deep within. For example, these buildings here behind me were built by Westerners back in the day. And you know, one thing I've noticed that when you come down to the Dongshan area, there's just a lot of one-way streets winding in and about. So the best way, if you want to check out the scenery and all the buildings, come on foot. In 1906, missionaries from the U.S. settled in Dongshan, working, buying homes, and building churches, schools, and hospitals. During the Republic of China period, from 1911 to 1949, some military officers and government officials also began to build villas and mansions here. This gave rise to many exotic-looking and luxurious Western-style buildings. Inside Dongshan, there are schools, residences, stores, and everything needed to support a small community. While wandering through the streets. I unexpectedly stumbled upon an interesting small store. Actually, this is a, this is a sign here for、uh, you can actually live inside these buildings.、Mm. If I move to Guangzhou, I'll move here. Actually, oh, hey, this little cat. Hey, meow meow. Hello, meow. You can find all types of things inside the, inside these old buildings. Look at this little store. Although the store doesn't seem to fit me, actually, it's it's pretty cool. Today we are in luck because the store owner's friend is having a get-together party in a nearby house. Just what we were hoping to see—the typical houses of the Guangzhou area. Oh. Ooh. So where are you taking me? Oh yeah. Oh. 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 Oh
morning. Uh, oh, a little later than I thought it was. Here we are at the Shangsha Zhou Shopping Center where people are walking, eating, and shopping. Today I'm excited because we get to finally eat the famous Cantonese breakfast, Dim Sung. And actually, Guangzhou is where it originated from. We're going to go in a restaurant where it's hustling and bustling, and we'll start the day off. I had dim sum in the Chinatown of Canada, so I'm anxious to see the difference between authentic Chinese dim sum and the Canadian version. Dim sum in Mandarin is called zao cha, which translates into morning tea. I wonder why they call it morning tea. Well, I guess I'll find out. Actually, you can eat dim sum at just about anywhere in Guangzhou, but we chose to find one of the most famous dim sum restaurants in the entire city. This restaurant has been here for over 100 years. Right now it's a little bit after 10 o'clock. Usually dim sum here lasts from 10 to 12. If you hear that, man, it's loud in here. Everyone is talking and talking. There's people, uh, old guys, ripping through newspapers, you know, people hanging out, just having a good time. You know, it's kind of strange to think that on a weekday at this time, there's so many people here. You know, for me, it's just lunch, but for them, this is a lifestyle. I think I might be the youngest kid in here. Anyways, this is the real dim sum atmosphere. One thing I've noticed here at Dim Sum is that the amount of food is really small because here it's all about taking in the aromas and enjoying the delicacy. Uh, for example, there's some of these plates I've seen before, uh, the steamed buns, the tarts, uh, the boiled pancakes, and actually it's all really cheap here. The, the, the most expensive is 16 kwai, the cheapest being 5. But there's one thing that I think most, most Westerners have never tried, and that's this. You guess what this is? It's chicken feet. Well, there's only one way to find out. Man, it's actually pretty good. Mm. Now for a quick tip on dim sum table etiquette. If your teapot is running low on tea, all you need to do is remove the lid and place it on the side of the top. And they will refill it ASAP. Guangzhou is home to the unique Lingnan culture. Originally, the word Lingnan referred to Guangdong, Guangxi, and the north of Vietnam. Here in the Shangsha Zhou Street, Lingnan influence is everywhere, from the Chilo architecture to the countless Lingnan specialty stores. Spread over 1.2 kilometers and with more than 300 shops and 100 years of history, Shangsha Zhou Shopping Street is one of the busiest commercial streets in China. Just finishing our 5 out of 5 star dim sum brunch, we decided to go for a walk. As we've seen, the local youth here probably won't be having brunch, but choose to relax by drinking afternoon tea. Whether it's breakfast, lunch or dinner, the tea culture is a big part of the daily life for the Cantonese. The Chinese take pride in their family name, heritage and tradition. I'm curious as to how they celebrate their lineage. We'll find out at the next stop, which is a historical relic dedicated to its ancestors. Check your map twice, as it's not easy to find. On the plus side, it's a brisk 15-minute walk from Shangxia Jiu. So what is it? Let's take a close look.
Chun Clan Academy, also known as the Chun Ancestral Hall, was built in 1894 in the Qing Dynasty. The most distinguishing part about this historical site is that every architectural piece is finely detailed. They use several types of materials in making this masterpiece. Stone. Wood, steel, porcelain, and many other types of materials were shipped in to shape this great ancestral hall. In the West, these type of iron poles are really common, but in traditional Chinese architecture, they're very rare. Here at the Chun Ancestral Hall, we see how there's plenty of iron poles customized to perfection. Every small piece in this hall is priceless. Everything from the wooden doors carved by hand to the miniature porcelain warriors upon the rooftop. You could spend hours exploring each nook and cranny of the Chun Academy and realize that each part is entirely unique. Apart from the beautiful outside architecture, Inside also has many things for us to see. Here at the China Central Hall, there's always types of small interesting exhibits happening. For example, the dragonfish exhibit. I just learned that legend has it that the Chinese people are descendants of the dragon, and the dragonfish are one of the sons of the dragon. I've also heard if you paint and decorate the ridge of your house with the dragonfish, it'll protect you from fire. So I'm trying to figure out the logic here. So the fish is from the water, and the water repels and puts out the fire. Hmm. Interesting logic. It works. On the roof of nearly every ancient Chinese structure is a mythical shape. A dragon's head with a fish's body, hence the name, the dragonfish. There's no blueprint for the dragonfish, so sculptors had the freedom to design whatever he felt was appropriate. If you keep your eyes open, even today, you'll spot the dragonfish on many ancient buildings. Well, you hear that, speaker? Well, we had a great time here. It's almost 5.30 and it's time to go. And only 10 quiet ticket. It was a great bang. Goodbye. With some time on our hands, I wanted to get a feel of how passionate the local Cantonese are when it comes to sport. I got more than I asked for, a soaking t-shirt after just five minutes on the court. Yo, I'm used to playing basketball, but not in the heat like this. It's hot in the south. Hey! Whoa. The rules are a little bit different than I'm used to, but I'll adjust. Whoa! <laughs> Temperature in Guangzhou in the summer is hot and wet because it's located in the subtropical area of China. But it doesn't stop the locals here from exercising and sweating it up. And hey, didn't stop me either. After a hard day's work, many of the locals take the long way home by strolling along the banks of the Pearl River. As dust sets, the temperature is calm and cool. In just a couple hours, the spectacular scene of Guangzhou nightlife will begin. The Pearl River is really a vital part of Guangzhou, and it's basically impossible not to bump into it at some time while touring around the city. The best way to see and experience the Zhujiang River is obviously by boat. The cheapest ticket is about 40 kwai, ranging to 200. Now it gets a little bit difficult when it comes to price ranges. It goes by different levels of boat, whether you want air conditioning or whether you want to eat or not. Uh, the longest the trip takes is about two hours, and the best time is to come around dinner time because that's when the view is the prettiest. so much in just one day in Guangzhou. Guangzhou is famous for foreign trade and business and holds China's largest trade fair, the Canton Fair. However, 
In between the seemingly endless skyscrapers, shopping malls, and building sites, there is a lot of Chinese culture and history. It's amazing how much the city actually has to offer. As the capital city of Guangdong Province, the Cantonese culture is deep and rich. Yet, Guangzhou also retains its own special charm. My favorite part of Guangzhou has to be the people. The Cantonese people are very friendly and willing to go out of their way to help. Also, no matter where you go in Guangzhou, the service is always tip top. Whether it's taking a cab, buying a magazine, or sitting down to catch a quick bite, as soon as you step through the door, you will be greeted with a smile and the ideal of the customer is always right. Thank you. Thank you. The people here in Guangzhou really take the time out to chat, relax, and just simply enjoy life. Whether it's playing chess in the park, babbling in the streets, drinking cold tea, or eating dim sum, the Cantonese people really understand that their health comes first. The architecture and gardens here has a big Western influence. So if you're not careful, you may be fooled that you're not in China. Guangzhou is a unique and wonderful time city not to be missed. But there's still lots to explore here, so I'll talk to you soon. For Travelog, I'm Chelsea. The structure was built in 1863 all by hand. China accommodates for all types of religions and languages, but for the Catholic religion, this was the birthplace in China. Because in the earliest history, the only place foreigners could enter the mainland was through Guangzhou. the facade, it's hard to imagine this all granite structure was constructed entirely by hand. Venturing into this Roman Catholic cathedral, into its majestic arches and vaults, lit through the stained glass windows, is a journey into history. At the crack of dawn, people flocked to Yesho Park to start the day off right with their daily morning exercise. Everything from badminton, group aerobics, martial arts, and even the Chinese version of hacky sack. Although their interpretation is a little bit different, the basic principle is the same. Keep it in the air. Guangzhou is one of the five national central cities, located in southern China on the Pearl River. About 120 kilometers northwest of Hong Kong, Guangzhou is a key transportation hub and trading port. A whopping 14... On this episode of Travelogue, we're going to visit the ancient city of Guangzhou, brave enough to taste the local delicacy of chicken feet, to see the largest Gothic cathedral in all of East Asia, marvel at the mythical statue of the five goats, and skip to the fabulous natural parks in the south of China. All this and more on today's episode of Travelogue. city of Guangdong province, Guangzhou, has a couple of nicknames. Most of the world already knows it as Canton, and the Chinese know it as Yangcheng, the goat city. I've heard plenty about its exotic foods, interesting buildings, and hot, hot weather. Welcome to Travelog. I'm Chelsea, and now it's time to explore Guangzhou. 
Why is Guangzhou named the Goat City? Legend has it that a long time ago, five saints riding five heavenly goats with wheat in their mouths came to Guangzhou. The saints rewarded the local people with the wheat, blessing them with eternal prosperity and abundance. And so Guangzhou became known as the Goat City. Yueshou Park is the largest park in downtown Guangzhou. Sprawling across 860,000 square meters, the park is made up of three artificial lakes and seven hills of USL Mountain. I had a great teacher here today. She knows all the moves. The newest hot moves here in Canton. This is where it's at. Check out the feet. Eighteen million people live in this huge city divided up into 12 suburbs. Western visitors to China sometimes ask, where is Canton? For many foreigners, Canton is Guangzhou City. But Canton has also been confused with the province of Guangdong, a blunder among English speakers inherited from the old times. It's believed that when the first European settlers, the Portuguese, arrived, they named the city as Canton, derived from Guangdong province. To make things simple, Canton is Guangzhou City, and Guangzhou City is in Guangdong. Hidden in the downtown of Guangzhou holds the hugest cathedral in all of Asia, the Sacred Heart Cathedral. This